Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to take a look at this little machine from Ortur. It's a 15 watt uh, laser engraver and it's actually really cheap and kind of fun. So let's take a deeper look at it. Now before I get started with the video, I want to give a quick disclaimer and just be completely honest with you. Ortur did send over this laser for review, uh, but they have no way of like influencing the video. Uh, they did not uh, view the video before you guys uh, do. And I'm gonna try to be as objective as at all possible. Now just in case that anyone uh, stops watching this video uh, very soon, I just want to clarify one thing. The 15 watts uh, that are specified on this machine cannot be compared to other lasers where the specified power is the laser power. But on this machine, the specified 15 watts is not the actual laser power. It's the power the laser draws, and that is very different. Uh, the actual laser power is more like 4.5 watts. So you have to keep that in mind if you compare this to even other uh, like Chinese laser attachments that might say 4.5 watts, and you think, oh wait, this has three times as much power. This must cut three times as fast. But they actually may be the same thing. Now. You can call it fast, false advertising, you can call it optimistic advertising or whatever. I don't really care. Uh, just thing to keep in mind. Now, even still at four and a half watt, uh, this is enough power to easily engrave on things like wood, on things like dark acrylic, uh, on things like painted metal, uh, all kinds of like leather, uh, basically any kind of organic substance. And it works great. Taking a look, for example, at these images I engraved here, uh, even from a uh, distance and, and also up close, you can easily tell uh, that this is a picture of the Singapore skyline where I visited uh, over Christmas. And the result is just stunning. It looks just like the black and white version of the photo. And if you, for example, use a family portrait or whatever and engrave that on a piece of wood, it will look just like the photo. Now, what I used here was dither or dithering, or however you want to pronounce it, uh, which is a technique that pr produces a lot of tiny little full power points. Uh, the other way of engraving on wood is by varying the laser power. But the issue with that is that you need to set it up exactly so that uh, it actually uh, burns uh, in the places where it's supposed to be light and not just not does anything. Uh, so I tried uh, the picture here in grayscale, but as you can see, it is not working quite as well. So I think uh, Dither is probably the, the better solution if you can work with it. Now, do keep in mind that it, it's not like printing out a picture on a piece of paper. This uh, image here took over an hour and uh, the grayscale took even longer. So you do have to be patient if you want uh, like a detailed picture like this. But if you're doing something like engraving a business card on, on some wood or on acrylic or whatever, then this goes a lot faster and we're just talking about a minute or two. One thing you do have to be very mindful though is with all engraving, it creates smoke. And smoke is bad for you and builds up in a room. So you need to work with this machine either at a window that is opened so that there's good ventilation or outside or even better, just build an enclosure over it uh, that exhausts all the air outside. This can be very simple. It could even be uh, a simple plastic box. I wouldn't use cardboard just because of the fire risk. And uh, like a simple exhaust fan that you can buy for like 10, 15 bucks on uh, eBay or Amazon or wherever, wherever. And what are you going to be working on? As I already said, you can engrave a whole bunch of different materials. But if you want to do more than engraving and start cutting, then you're basically going to be limited to paper, thin cardboard. Even thin wood is already a challenge for this laser. I tried to uh, cut through this 2 millimeter uh, plywood here and only got m partly through, even with uh, multiple passes at uh, only like 100 millimeters a minute. And as soon as we go up to like 3 millimeter or thicker, you just forget it. Uh, you're going to need a more powerful laser to go through that. Now, part of it is just because the laser power is not as high. But the other thing is that this, of course, is a very cheap laser and they have to save on money somewhere. And the diode is one of the places. Uh, if we look at the focus point, and you do have to focus this laser since uh, it doesn't come out uh, nicely parallel in a very thin point, but it actually is uh, like 
convergent and you want to have the point exactly on the surface. This is going to create a very small point and it also uh, amplifies the power. The problem though with all diode lasers, but this one in particular, is that you can't really focus it to a point, but more like a line. Now in this case, uh, it is on the, let's call this the y-axis, it is uh, the line like this. Uh, and what this basically means that uh, if you're cutting along this y-axis, uh, it is quite easy to go through. And uh, actually here on this uh, piece of wood, uh, it went through. But on the x-axis here, it didn't go through at all. And the problem there is that on the y-axis, when it, let's say, moves up and down, uh, the whole laser beam is covering quite a narrow thing and uh, moves over it. And all the power of the laser is going to hit that very narrow spot. If you move in the x-axis, however, uh, that laser beam is going to cover a much, much wider strip. So the power is distributed over a wider area and you need to either go a lot slower uh, to in put the same amount of energy into the material or you need to have a higher power. And this just creates this discrepancy and makes cutting very, very difficult. And the other thing is that this machine does not have a z-axis. So the focus point will just be in one point. You focus it before your laser and then you do your design and you can't change it up and down. And when you cut thicker wood, uh, by the time you get to the bottom and you're doing the pass that you've cut all the way through, the laser is basically out of focus there at the bottom uh, just because uh, it is further down and you can't really refocus it uh, during uh, the cutting, uh, even if you pause it, since by refocusing you will move it ever so slightly left and right, uh, since the lens is not all that tight in there and you will basically ruin your design. So just don't buy this laser if you want to cut wood, but if you want to engrave on wood, it works great. And although uh, this uh, laser line is almost a millimeter wide if you look at it. The lines that you can engrave are quite fine and work pretty good. So overall, if you want a very cheap, easy way to get into lasering, uh, this machine only takes about 10 minutes to assemble. So there's no big worry about that. And the software is really quite easy to use. I'll show you a little bit at the end of the video uh, of the software. And it does basically plug and play and it works immediately. Uh, it has some nice safety features to where uh, if you turn on the laser and you just leave it there, it's going to turn on uh, after a while because it realizes, oh, we basically forgot about it and it doesn't want to create a fire. So it automatically turns off. Also, if you like lose connection to your computer, it doesn't just stop and keep the laser on, it turns it off and has a whole bunch of safety features like that that make it much more safe to operate. Now still, you have a laser that is literally burning wood. So there is an inherent fire risk and you should never operate this laser unattended. Also, while talking about risk, always wear safety glasses uh, designed. Uh, the laser also comes with a pair of safety glasses uh, as this laser can very much blind you if you uh, get uh, like a reflection at the wrong angle. But let's not end on a negative note. Uh, let's go over and take a look at the software and I'll show you just uh, what you can do with it. And of course, you can also use other external software and Google do much more elaborate things. Uh, but if you're buying a very simple uh, entry level laser, you probably want to uh, use the included software at least for it to begin. All right, so I got the software open. I'm just going to uh, quickly turn on the machine. As you can see, it honed itself and I also now have a connection available to computer. I'm going to connect here and now it's connected. Uh, down here on the bottom left, I have just the simple like arrow buttons to move it around, all that good stuff. Uh, you can adjust the speed here, like I can make it go super fast. You can also adjust the distance, let's say 10 millimeters. And as you can see, this machine does really go uh, quite fast. Then down here is uh, like, these are kind of custom buttons uh, inside of a laser gribble, uh, which is like uh, just regular software that anyone can use. And uh, Artur just has uh, created some custom uh, buttons to add in there. You can also do that yourself. Uh, it's uh, quite simple and you can just import them for some more easy things like uh, just moving to different uh, places in the build volume. Or here you can turn on the laser and then here you have the different laser powers. 
I'm going to keep it here at minimum because I don't want to burn anything. And then you can turn it off again. Um, if you leave the laser on too long, then it's going to turn off and lock itself. Then you just have to press this little lock icon here uh, to unlock it again. It's just like, in case you forgot that you have your laser on. But it can also be annoying that if you're trying to focus and maybe position it, uh, the time limit for, especially for the weakest power, in my opinion, is a bit too short. Uh, but, well, you get used to it. It's not that big of a deal. Then if you want to actually engrave something, you can uh, import a file here. And uh, what, what do we have here? Uh, I'll just uh, open up uh, this image. And as you can see, this is the image that uh, you saw earlier. And then here you have like the main four uh, options to do it. Line-to-line uh, -line tracking is going to produce a grayscale image. Uh, the one bit black and white dithering is the one that turned out the best for me. Uh, down here you have different dithering uh, methods. Uh, the difference is not that big, you can try them out. Uh, I just use the default one. Um, you also have vectorize where it uh, creates an outline and then here you can uh, use like different settings uh, for like the thresholds and stuff like that. Um, center line is gonna uh, try to like find the center, but this is of course is not gonna work with this image. This is for like text or something uh, where you wanna just engrave uh, on the center line. But it's usually creates kind of walking results. But for this one, it will probably be dithering would be the best. And down here, you can also set the quality level. That's the number of lines per millimeter. Like eight is really good. That's a very high quality, but you can go down as low as maybe like five. But if you go too low, you're going to actually see lines uh, instead of seeing uh, like a, a full black image, especially if you're like uh, engraving on uh, paint metal or something like that. You want to have a decently high uh, number of lines, otherwise it won't work. And then when you click next, you get some uh, simple options here. You set the speed up here uh, while engraving. Uh, you set the maximum power here. Uh, you can also set a minimum power, but that's more for grayscale images. And then down here, you just set how big you want this image to be. And like 20 millimeters will be a bit too small for that. Let's do 150, that's what I did. And then you can click create and it's gonna generate all the cheat code and all the like things that it needs uh, to do the lasering. And it only takes a second. Now this is quite a large image, so it takes a little bit longer. And here we go. Here you can see the preview of all the different moves. Like the red dots are where it uh, is engaged. And then you can see a little bit the travel moves in between. And then to start, you would simply press this little uh, green run icon and it would start engraving. Now you have to make sure that it starts with the home point at like the zero point. And if you like adjusted the position of the laser, make sure to like reset the laser uh, so that it takes this as the new homing point. If you don't know uh, if you're at the home point or not, you can just click the little home icon here and then it moves uh, to the home point. So that's it for this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, also follow me on Instagram. I do post a lot more about all the projects I'm, that are going on, uh, about my CNC projects, about all the 3D printer things I'm doing, about laser things. Uh, so make sure to check out my Instagram, link down below. And that's it basically for this video. You can check out our tour down below and thanks for watching and until next time.